Men, Women, and the Me Too Campaign, a Catholic Perspective. Hi, I'm Teresa Tamio from the Catholic View for Women, along with my beautiful co-hosts, Elena Rodriguez and Janet Morana. And we are going to dive into this issue, which continues to make headlines, of course, the hashtag Me Too, all over the Internet, all over different websites and different media outlets, raising a very important concern about sexual harassment and the sexual objectification of women. But we are going to look at that, not only what the world says about it, but more importantly, what the church says, because that's what we do here on the Catholic View for Women. To me, the timing of this whole thing, ladies, first of all, the whole scandal with Harvey Weinstein and Hollywood mm -hmm. and the hashtag Me Too all broke out in the month of October on the 100th anniversary of Our Lady of Lords. I can't remember who pointed that out to me. I was doing an interview on the whole Me Too controversy and the Harvey Weinstein scandal. And it might have been a priest whom I was interviewing who said, do you realize that when it broke was in the month of the 100th anniversary? And of course, one of the, the sins that Our Lady of Fatima talked about to the children was the fact of, of lust, that so many people were losing their souls for, for that case. That's right. That sin. And, and we have to be very mindful that uh, the, the, the sins of lust are usually committed in a, in, a, in, a, in a private setting, and a lot of people might tend to think, or, or the, the temptation is to think, whatever is private doesn't affect the society, and, it, and I'm, I'm an adult, I'm free to decide what I'm going to do, and it, it's nobody else's business, but the real reality is that it does affect the whole of society and it corrupts the individual, and it corrupts everybody around the individual, and then the whole of society. We have to be very mi mindful about that. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so this is why it's very important. It's a great mention that Our Lady of, of Fatima um, asking prayers for, uh, for purity and especially for children to grow up to be pure, but also families. I mean, as adults, we need to ask for that every day, for the grace of purity in our state of life. Right. And, you know, I find <clears throat> very ironic that uh, Hollywood, of course, you know, um, they, they were all with the Me Too campaign, with uh, the Hollywood award shows, the women all Golden wore the... Golden Globes. Right, yeah. they, they wore black, uh -huh. and yet the outfits, when you look, they were, like, popping out all over those outfits. And so, therefore, they're saying, well, we don't want men touching us or doing this and that, but yet look at how you're dressing. And, and then they were also promoting the latest Fifty Shades of Grey Fifty film Shades of Grey, in, in too, which is also awards presentation. another The same uh, night that they introduced this whole, they're all wearing the Me Too signs and they're all wearing black. Right. Not saying that, that <laughs> we're not uh, glad that they're addressing this issue. I mean, That's this right. is some, something I the mean, church has been talking about Sexual forever. harassment in the workplace is a, is a terrible it's thing. It's epidemic. And it's epidemic. It really is. And we know that since that, so many news anchors now have been uh, accused. Attorneys and take, general. general. Taken right. off the air. I mean, it's good, through Congress. You name it. All professions. And it is terrible. But then also, too, look where, go back, you know, like we're saying, from Amana Vitae forward in the sexual revolution. Look what we've done to women. Mm -hmm. we, we've lowered, you know, it's not like the Blessed Mother is our model and this is how we should be pure. It's all this sex, 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 you know, all the time. And you just can't have it both ways. You can't, at one point, be scantily dressed, walking down the corridor in your office and think that men aren't looking at you and then maybe you're going to accidentally brush into a touch you inappropriately because you're just all over the place. There's, there's no that. excuse for, for assaulting anyone, That's right. regardless of how you're dressed. But at the same time, if you are concerned about being viewed or used as an object, you don't want to do things that are going to objectify yourself. That's I think right. we need to make that clear. And the church is very wise. You know, I, I hear a lot out in the culture of people complaining that the church is not progressive, that the church is restrictive. Where actually, if you look at it, and you brought up a great point, Janet, uh, Huma, Huma Right. back in 1968, Pope Paul VI wrote out what would it, it's almost like a prediction of what would happen for the next so 50 prophetic. years yeah. it's so prophetic precisely so women would not be objectified as and they abused. are now like they are now and it is happening so who is really authentically progressive the church is protecting right. women protecting the family right. if you if you do not protect the family your society cannot progress it mm -hmm. will not exist well, and also, so too, the I church think is progressing part of this, too, is bringing back to uh, men authentically what they're supposed to be, protectors of women, right? Yes. Uh, you know, and so recently, you know, Teresa and I were in Washington, D.C., and, right, Teresa, we mm -hmm. got to... For the March for Life, yeah. At the mm -hmm. March for Life, and a gentleman was there, uh, Bill... Bill Don Donahue, Donahue, and he's with the Theology of the Body Institute and also the co-author of RISE, which is an awesome 30-day challenge for men. 
And what this does is it, it, it does a great job of, of really honing in on the problem. And, and this is what John Paul II, of course, who gave us the teachings of the theology of the body over a series of audiences uh, during his pontificate, general audiences. This helps us understand who we are. What we have right now with all of this, with the Me Too campaign, with the transgender agenda, which we've touched upon this show, with all of these different issues, it's an identity crisis. Right. We don't know who we are. We were talking about this and we were interviewed recently at, uh, on At Home with Jim and Joy about be who you are. That's what John Paul Amen. II has said. And St. Catherine of Siena, when you are whom you are meant to be, you will set the world ablaze. But we have to understand who we are, how we're designed, the male-female complementarity, which sounds kind of highfalutin and complicated, but it's really not. It's, right. There's a reason we are made male and female. So we sat down with... Um, Bill Donahue, and he took a look first at the at the Rise series and the Rise Challenge, which is really important. But even more important than that, he gave us his take as an instructor of theology of the body as to what's happening in our, in our culture and what the church can give us to address it. Let's take a listen. Yeah, so a better part of a year ago, a couple of guys, myself, uh, Chris Cope, Chris Stefanik, we got together on the phone and we we're talking about something to do for men. We just personally, as husbands and fathers, and looking at the cultural landscape, we just we just thought men need a B12 shot. They need something to pump them up, remind them of who they are, their dignity, and their vocation. And so we uh, prayed, brainstormed, and we uh, we just felt this call to do rise. So it's a 30-day challenge for men, simple, direct, kind of mission-oriented, but also focused on their identity, so that they know who they are and what they're truly called to be. The whole pla the whole platform is a digital. Um, video meditation, daily written meditations, and a daily challenge. So it's easy to access. Uh, we've been blown away by the response. People from all over the country and the world are jumping on board. Uh, all kinds of men from 19 up to 70 years old, priests, deacons, uh, married, divorced, single. And uh, they get it dripped out in email every day, their challenge, their video meditation. And um, there's a comment section that is built into the digital platform as well. And this has been like, the thing that's blown us away. These guys are jumping on board in this kind of safe space, this sanctuary, where as men, they can share their stories. And I mean, the first day, the first minute meditation from Stefanik, we had over 100 comments just exploding, guys sharing. So we've tapped a nerve and we're just thrilled about it. Yeah, we've been, again, praying and preparing Rise for the better part of a year. And as we've seen things topple in popular culture, the entertainment industry, politics, men falling everywhere we've just been saying god you're, you're doing this you know we're getting out of the way you, you want men to rise you want men not to be ashamed or uh you know this idea of toxic masculinity like they're the enemy but we have to discover who we really are and the idea of rise is literally to to lift up into your vocation and your call so the timing again is it's all god's it's perfect timing and we feel that rise is a pro it's not a program but a movement that just encourages men to, again, look up, don't be ashamed, be who you were born to be. And I think, ultimately, that's what women are waiting for and longing for. And not to be afraid of men or to condemn men, but to be the man, be a man for me. Yeah, I think we live in a culture of fear right now. And I think it's this whole idea of the battle between the sexes and the sense of mistrust. This goes all the way back to Eden. I mean, Genesis chapter 3. So it's always been shaky ground of men and women and their relationships. And the look, you know, St. John Paul II talks about this in Theology of the Body. The, the look can just, it can change hearts, it can destroy hearts. And in this hypersensitive culture right now, men do feel, with all these accusations, I mean, they're just feeling shackled. They're feeling afraid. They're feeling like, well, I just have to retreat. And we're saying, no, this is the very moment that you have to rise. You have to look with love, not with lust. You have to see the beauty and dignity of women and again, they're, they're aching for that look. Women know the look of love. They know when a man is being a steward of their beauty, a real protector of their dignity. And uh, again, this is who we're supposed to be. If this doesn't happen, if the relationship between men and women isn't balanced and made whole again, the whole culture is going to suffer. And I think we're seeing that suffering right now in an unprecedented way. I think we're seeing some real significant... Uh, anniversaries. You know, we just celebrated in October past 100 years of Fatima and all the predictions that Our Lady made about the errors of Russia. And we know now, I think, the wider context of what those errors are. They're an attack on the family. They're an attack on culture, on motherhood and fatherhood. Uh, we're also seeing this year, 2018, the 50th anniversary of Humanae Vitae. And we saw there, Blessed Paul VI, this prophetic vision 
that if we allow contraception, you know, these things are going to happen. A lowering morality, treating women like objects, government interference, right, into the realm of sexuality. And uh, I just, again, this is God's timing. We brainstormed and prayed about this idea for Rise. Uh, guys came together from different, you know, filmmakers, David and Sean from the Humanum Project, uh, Philip Braun and Chris Cope from Cardinal Studios, Stefanik and myself. Um, and we just see God pulling the strings here and orchestrating things. It's the time to focus on the gift of human sexuality, the gift of masculinity and femininity, to know our identity and our vocation. Like we're building, uh, as things are collapsing, we're building fresh again, our true identity and mission. It's an, it's an amazing time. You know, again, I think the entire culture is suffering from an identity crisis and a vocation crisis. We, we just, we're forgetting what humanity is. So in the hypersexualized culture, with all the, with the crazy accusations and things that are going on and the abuse and sexual harassment uh, cases, we can't run from the passion that's in us. We can't run from our attraction and desire for intimacy. We can't go Puritan here. You know, we can't pull back, but we have to press in. Well, what is this desire? What is this passion that gets us into trouble sometimes? John Paul the Great was so clear on this, that Eros is a gift from God that has to be redeemed. And the program of Rise, we talk directly about this with guys. We talk about the porn problem. We talk about uh, the testosterone that fires us up, but we don't say shut it down. Don't lock it up because of fear of what could happen. Uh, allow God into the Eros, into your desire, and that will make you a man. That will make you a man who knows how to relate to women, who knows how to relate to your brothers, who knows how to find your vocation. And it's, it's all about the passion. I think, again, Pope Francis, Pope Benedict, St. John Paul the Great have specifically spoken about this deep desire in the heart. And it, yes, has it gotten us off the rails? Absolutely. Our culture is showing us that so clearly. But we can't chuck it. We have to find it. And again, rise into our true identity and mission. And uh, it's to be a passionate people. Pope Francis says that. He says, all of human life is fraught with passion. It's a gift. And if we tap into it rightly, put it the right direction, it's going to be a culture of life, culture of love. So to my brothers who are out there and are feeling this identity crisis and want to know who they are and what their mission is as men, go to menriseup.org. Uh, you'll find right away an entry point. We do waves of rise where we encourage men from around the country and around the world to go together into the challenge. Uh, you'll sign up. You'll get a, a digital dripped out video and meditation and challenge every day for 30 days. And in that platform, each day, you have the opportunity to share a comment, share your story. Um, guys are encouraging each other in prolific ways uh, in the Rise Challenge. So it's very simple, very direct. And again, um, it's building this movement of men. And uh, we're just thrilled about how far it's going and how far it can go. We're at day four right now, and uh, already like hundreds and hundreds of men from all over the place, and the comments are just blowing up. And uh, they get a little video from Stefanik, we have a daily quote and a quick meditation and a challenge. The challenges hit guys who are single, married, divorced, uh, widowed, um, kids at home. Uh, so every guy, every stage of life, uh, a unique challenge for them. When we come back after the break, we're going to dive into a little bit more about the teaching of the church on human sexuality, really understanding who we are made in the image and likeness of God. And what does it mean, this male-female complementary stuff? You'd be surprised, as Elena said, how prophetic the church really is. The church has our best interest always in mind. And as Pope Benedict used to say, God is not a big no, but a big yes to love and to life. We'll be right back. Stay tuned for more Catholic View for Women coming up right here on EWTN. Welcome back to the Catholic View for Women. I'm Teresa Tamio, along with my co-hosts, of course, Elena Rodriguez and Janet Marana, talking about men, women, and the Me Too campaign, a truly Catholic perspective. There was so much, ladies, that Bill mm. said in that seven-minute awesome, awesome clip that we had when Janet and I sat down with him uh, during the March for Life uh, a few months ago. So many great points mm. and how men really want to understand how to be men. And there's so much confusion out there. Mm. Right. Well, you know, I think the confusion also is starting with the young boys because right now uh, groups like the Boy Scouts, you know, for example, are being hijacked. Mm -hmm. uh, they just recently dropped the word boy 
from scouts, just scouts now, not boy scouts. Yeah. Uh, I even know back in Staten Island where I'm from, some girls have joined the Boy Scouts because they feel they want to go camping too. Now the Girl Scouts went camping, well, so I was a Girl Scout. We went camping, but no, her brother's in the Boy Scouts. She wants to go camping with her brother, and so this was all you know made a big deal of. And I know a lot of families are very upset about this, Catholics all over the country, and I, I think we have to remind them that there are some good groups still out there mm -hmm. for boys, you know, with the Catholics. And for girls, actually. And for American girls, American Heritage too. girls. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But for the boys, like the, the Knights of Columbus have always had the Squire program, and I don't think that gets promoted enough or, or people even realize it, you know. So if you have a Knights of Columbus chapter in, in your area, most parishes have a KFC connected there ask about the squire program see if they have a good squire program but then there's a few other things there's the um it's called kefa uh, that was founded all the way back in 1998 and they have uh chapters they don't call them troops and they're um they do retreats for young boys and men together and then finally there's a new one out called uh the troops of saint saint george yes i've heard of them yeah and mm -hmm. uh that was just uh, approved by one of the bishops in texas and that is modeled really like the boy scouts so they do archery and they do camping and mm -hmm. all that and like you just said Teresa, for the girls is the american heritage girls so i think you know for parents out there the message here is for your young boys and girls if you don't like what's mm -hmm. happening with the girls and boy scouts which mm -hmm. you know this is where the other side gets in they get into our schools they they get in to these groups and, and they, they well the shift. confusion then you know, it leads to confusion. more confusion and it That's leads right. to not really uh, appreciating who we are male and female which exactly. leads to the objectification yes. so it's it's all so, so these are good alternatives to start with your young people but, but it, it has to important. getting to the root of this though because we're talking about the me too campaign getting back to the main subject is what you're saying janet in bringing this up is it has to start when they're young. It has to start with understanding yes. who we are. Exactly. It's, it's the base, the foundation. Right. Uh, uh, when you were mentioning the, the, um, the, the options for boys to have uh, their own uh, retreats and, and camp out experiences, Fraternus is another organization as well that comes to mind where it's it's the, the fathers taking out their boys right. uh, to different camping experiences mm -hmm. where they where they learn to be boys mm -hmm. and they learn that, uh, that uh, confraternity and and what it really is it's men challenging younger men right. and it's it's like which that. is actually challenged that the this this 30 day or rise the 30 day challenge yes. that they have is similar is men challenging men and right. it is so important it's like they frame it themselves it's iron sharpens iron it's not the same as as a mother as a woman i might um i might try to bring up my son in a certain way but it is it's not, nothing nothing substitutes the father the male role model right. and that is very important one thing i want to point out that bill mentioned is when they were starting the initiative they they first prayed and brainstormed in that order. Right. They prayed, prayed first. and they brainstormed. Everything we do in life, everything we try to fix and solve has to start with prayer. At the center of, of it all is prayer. Right. I want to pick up on something our spiritual advisor, Father Frank Pavone, uh, we always go to him and he reviews all of our clips and all the documents we talk about. And he had some interesting insights to mention regarding what uh, Bill had to say. He says, my input in all of this is that there's blatant hypocrisy when people who reject the church's teaching on sexuality complain, when people violate it in practice, either sex means nothing or it's something to get worked up about, but you can't have it both ways. The left has spent decades emptying sexual activity of its significance right. and teaching people that if it feels good, do it, which was a big saying when we were growing up, yeah. right, Janet? Oh, yeah. They don't want boundaries, and all of a sudden they're the ones indigna with indignation and forcing boundaries. If you say sex has no meaning, but personal pleasure, then you should stop complaining when people act on that belief. Mm -hmm. Also in Bill's comments, he says, the idea of eros, the pleasure of love, is not an evil to be locked up, but rather a gift to be redeemed. And I think this is what's really important. It's a crucial truth because the world, as you said, starting out our segment today, Elena, thinks that the church is so oppressive, oppressive and doesn't right. want us mm -hmm. to enjoy that gift that God has given us, mm -hmm. but there's a proper place for it. And I love Father's phrase and Bill's phrase about redeeming it because it's a crucial truth. Two easy extremes are to let passion run wild or to try to kill it all together. Mm -hmm. Right? Exactly. Yeah, so I think that's really, really important. And you mentioned uh, Humana Vitae. We're going to be talking a lot about that in, the, in these upcoming shows this season because of this year uh, that we're shooting this, that we're taping this, marking 50 years of Humana Vitae. And every time I go back and look at that document, it's like, are you kidding me? It gives you this chills. This is so prophetic. It gives you chills to read it. It right. really is. 
Well, it, <laughs> and I'm very thrilled that this year also will be the year he'll be uh, canonized. Canonized, we'll, right? You know, mm -hmm. uh, yes. you know, while this series a airs, we'll be he'll probably be during he'll be the new canonization. Saint. We'll get to see history saints. in the making, right history here on making. EWTN. Exactly. Yeah. You know, and I. You know, let's face it, in 1968, I was uh, in high school, sophomore in high school, and I can remember distinctly, I, at that point, I was drifting away from the church, and I can remember when this whole thing started about the, the birth control pill and the church now saying no, and uh, the whole women's movement, and, and the, you know, this started with the whole burning the bras and all that jazz. And I can distinctly remember everyone pointing fingers of condemnation at the church for being so oppressive to women, and look what they're doing, and this and that. And when you look back now, no. The church really cared for us. I mean, we've done shows about this, about how bad the birth control pill is for women's health. Well, the pill the and pill. also uh, the <clears throat> eggs, where they're trying to harvest women's eggs, eggs, how dangerous that is. Just promiscuous sex, how that affects women more than it does okay. men in terms of the way our bodies are designed, that we, well, we are more susceptible to disease. The increase you know, in all the diseases, STDs right. and everything else. Right. So when you look at you know, the culture that said, oh, you know, love the one you're with and do all the, the have sex whenever you want it, it's led to everything bad for women, the disease and everything else we've said, and the, the birth control pills and right. all that. It's just all these chemicals that are group one carcinogens. We've said this before. And then the church has been the one to stand rock solid to, to stand up for women. So the know? church is really freeing. Yes, it has right. been freeing. It has in been that, freeing. Uh, and, you know. uh, one of the things that Bill Donahue said on the clip is, is we live in a culture of fear. And that made me realize, of course we do, but the fear is instilled by the culture. And, but, and we're subject to it. And we don't, it, it, it's little by little. So it's like the, the, the water that is lukewarm and then it's warmer and warmer. We don't notice the, the okay. progress in temperature the until it's boiling. Water and until it, it's boiling. And right. then, and then it's right. too late, you're dead. So, but, but who, who is the father of fear? Where does this fear come from? He's also the father of lies. And right. Exactly, exactly, and of confusion. So the culture is a culture of fear that confuses you, and then you don't even know who you are. You lose your identity as right. a man, and as a woman. And that, that's where the key is, not knowing who we are. Already, uh, three minutes left, so we wanted to give you a little bit more time for, for homework. homework. So yeah. please, let's, let's dive into that. Yeah, Great we, discussion, we ladies. Really, Thank you. <clears throat> we do have a lot of homework recommendations, starting with number one. Uh, we would like you to read Umana Vitae, okay? And at Priest for Life, we've developed uh, not only just the document is here, but a study guide to dive into Umana Vitae, and especially with the canonization of Paul VI. And the anniversary. And the anniversary. It's right. the perfect thing to mm -hmm. get into. So that will be up on the website, how to get a hold of that. Also, at Priest for Life, we have a great page, priestforlife.org slash contraception, and where there are many articles that you can read and, and disseminate. And, of course, number three, Teresa's great book, Beyond Me, My Selfie, and I, Finding Real Happiness in a Self-Absorbed World, and that's available. That EWTN. gets into the whole identity crisis that we're suffering from that Bill right. talked about and that we need to know who we are before we find. And this is available, of course, at the EWTN Religious right. Catalog. And, of course, this book, Teresa, uh, for me, is one of my favorites of yours called Extreme, Extreme Makeover, Makeover, Women Transformed by Christ, Not Conformed to the Culture. You, you talk about a great resource and, co and combine that with your resource from Priests for Life on Humana Vitae because I break down Humana Vitae in that book as well, so those two would be great companions. That's right. right. Great. This is great reading. And really, and, and I really recommend this to give it to your, start with your teenage mm -hmm. daughters mm -hmm. and, and uh, Very really good. get some Very of this good. into yeah. them. Very and true. then finally, of course, uh, the moms and dads, a suggestion is... Uh, to build a weekly time to have uh, for a daughter's night, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. uh, and I know some some churches even have mother and daughter, uh, mother and son dances or father and daughter dances, and all this uh, stuff is very very good. Please go to our website to check out all the homework details at the Catholic View for Women. dot com. We'll see you next time, and remember, don't be afraid of the church because she has our best in mind. We'll see you next time on the Catholic View for Women.